So I have a very springy and vintage looking automatic typewriter. This is a Smith Corona Coronet. We have repainted this one. This is not an original color, but look at this green with the blue. It's so springy and totally vintage looking. I love it. Okay, so this is a 1960s, by the way, the, my name is Laura. I'm with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. So glad to have you with us today. If you don't know anything about us, please visit our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. Also below, you'll see all kinds of links to explore. You can visit our Etsy shop, you can visit our website, you can buy our typewriters on either of the places. Um, FYI, there are more photos on the website than there are on Etsy. We also, for those of you who aren't, who haven't purchased from us a typewriter, we have things such as pads and ribbons and covers, puzzles and wall art. So please support this channel by supporting our website. Okay, let's get into this. A 1960s Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12. That means it's electric. You have to plug it in. It has a power return and um, no, so there's no handle. Um, also, there'll be timestamps. So if you want to just jump ahead to see how it types um, or you want to jump even to the very end where I give a brief recap of how this machine operates and the overall condition, then you can jump ahead and look for the timestamps below. Okay, first of all, here's your holders, paper holder, it keeps your paper from flopping over. Margins, press and drag to set your margins. They have to be manually set. Now the carriage is only gonna move as far as you have margins set. So if your margins are way out here, then your carriage will move way out there. And if they're way in like this, your carriage is only gotta go that far. There's the bell. It's not the prettiest bell, but it's there to let, and that lets you know that, hey, you're at the end of your margin. You gotta hit that return handle or that re power return. Okay. This has a bigger carriage than most typewriters. It's a 12 inch carriage and that just handles um, if you want bigger paper. So maybe you want landscape or you just have a special size paper. Because of that and I recommend these um, larger carriages for those of you who are crafters only because it gives you more options. Okay, uh, you saw that I moved this carriage and to release that carriage, there's a lever on each side of this carriage and you just pull it in. It doesn't matter which side and then you can move your carriage. Right here on the right side, that releases the tension on your paper in case you need to adjust it. On the left side, you'll see this lever with a one, two, three. That's for when you hit the power return. Right, here we go. And that's gonna advance either one, two, or three lines. Okay, if to get inside to look at your ribbon, you just gently pull this forward. It comes open very easy and you'll see inside a universal ribbon. Now a universal ribbon is a two inch spool. So if you're not sure if your typewriter takes a universal ribbon, please measure it. But if you need more ribbons for your typewriters, there's a link in the description below. You can get them on our website. Now, the end of the ribbon is not the end of the ink. So you're typing away, you'll get to the end of the spool. You still have a bunch of ink on this ribbon. And uh, so you need to reverse the direction of your ribbon to go back the other way. And the way you do that is right here. This is your ribbon reversal, okay? This ink or this ribbon does not auto reverse some ribbons do and you just reverse back and forth okay and you should be able to do that 10 20 30 40 well not 10 i would say 40 50 60 times a bunch of times before you need to change out your ribbon and when it's time to change it out you just pick it up and put it back down and you just gotta fiddle with it a little bit. There's a little pin that sticks up, there we go. And one of those holes has to go on top of that pin. And then make sure it's threaded properly, like this has come out. I'm just gonna push that back in there. 
And if you've got one of these typewriters and want to know how to thread it, I have taken an up close image of this escapement area and you just need to go to the link in our description below and that will show you how you can use it as a reference how to um, load your ribbon black on top red on bottom all right let's do some typing okay so you just put your typewriter or not typewriter your paper right here and uh, this is a guide you can either pull it in or pull it out whatever and turn it through make sure the paper is underneath the bar and you can see it's just a hair. I kind of I try to bring it all the way up and you can see it's a little uneven. So that's where I'm gonna use this paper release. Fix it, voila. Okay, power switch right here. Remember it must be plugged in. I like to give electric typewriters a good 10 to 15 seconds to get all the gears going. Uh, while we're doing that, here's your color selector, black, red, tab you can set your tab clear your tab right there um, backspace and copy set this is something that you probably never use it just determines how hard these strike bars down here are going to hit your paper okay let's go ahead and type and you know what i'm going to check my margins really quick i'm going to bring it in okay so this is a 1960s Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12. Oh, I've got it on three. Let's go back to one. All right, let's test out all these keys. I really like, um, let's set it here. I really like uh, Electrics One for kids for those of you who are new to typewriters and you're really just not sure about anything they're just so easy to use and uh, these Smith Corona electrics are very affordable and three um, if you're a very fast typist you're gonna love an electric whoops and that does happen if you get two keys up there at the same time, you just knock them down. So uh, some people wonder, what do you do when um, you make a mistake? Well, um, on typewriters, you can either use an eraser or there's whiteout or Usually, let's say you're just typing and you wanna change it, you hit backspace. Backspace does not erase, but then just type over and keep going. Or if it's a really, really bad mistake, then let's say this whole sentence. There are three keys, and you don't have to use it for this, but there's three keys with an auto repeat. So you can X out and just hold it down. X is one of them or you can dash through it. Oh, that's an underline, hold on. There's my dash. Um, another uh, auto repeat is your period. You just hold that down, okay? So, um, and you don't have to hold it down to make them a, to clear it. You can just X, you can dash, whatever. Okay, so let's do some sentences. Okay, so here's really good. I'm glad this happened. Okay, if you look, you can see it's starting to get, the font is getting faint. That tells me I am at the end of my ribbon. And if you look at it, it's pulled really tight. That means it's, at, it's not moving. So if you watch, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit the um, ribbon reversal. So watch this ribbon, it'll release. Boom, it released. So now it's going the other direction and I can keep going. Oops, on the wrong line. So this is where you backspace. 
I know this is taking longer, but I would rather you guys, this is gonna happen to you because that's part of typing. And you can just see what I do. And you heard that ding, that ding says, hey, you're at the end of your margin. Okay, let's do some longer sentences. Okay, there's the ding of the bell. So normally you would hit the return handle here, but I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so now it's gonna stop on me. And let's say, oh, I wanna finish that word. You just hit MR for margin release. There we go. Uh, this is a wonderful typewriter. Fast typists, kids, beginners, and anyone wanting an affordable, easy typewriter to have on hand. The bell works, but is a little cute. Oh, you guys. Love this, love this typewriter. It's awesome. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a great day.